A Fox News alert, the U.S. striking three facilities used by Iranian-backed militias in Iraq. It comes after another attack on one of our bases injured three U.S. service members. One of them is in critical condition. You are watching Fox and Friends First on this Tuesday morning. I'm Carly Shimkus. Todd has the day off. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says his prayers are with the brave Americans who were injured. And he says the administration will not hesitate to defend our people and our interests. Robert Charles is standing by with his analysis on this breaking news. But first, David Spunt has more from Washington. Hi, David. Hi, Carly. One of our service members critically injured, though we don't know much about that person's condition at this time, but do expect to learn more in the hours ahead. The president ordered the strikes after U.S. forces came under attack by a drone. According to national security sources, the Iranian-backed militia Qatayb Hezbollah and other affiliated groups under the umbrella of Iranian-backed militants claimed credit for the attack. President Biden was briefed by his national security team yesterday at Camp David on Christmas Day. Defense Secretary Lloyd Lloyd Austin put out a statement that reads in part, let me be clear, the president and I will not hesitate to take necessary action to defend the United States, our troops, and our interests. There is no higher priority. While we do not seek to escalate conflict in the region, we are committed and fully prepared to take further necessary measures to protect our people and our facilities. The White House putting out a statement, the president places no higher priority than the protection of American personnel serving in harm's way. The United States will act at a time and in a manner of our choosing should these attacks continue. Now, this adds just to a growing list, as you mentioned, on U.S. forces since October 17th, days after Hamas targeted Israel and the United States Armed Forces stood with Israel. Some of the attacks more dangerous than others, like this one yesterday, critically injuring a service member. Two other service members, Carly, sustained injuries as well. Though, according to the official statement, their conditions are not as severe. We'll continue to watch it. Back to you. All right, David Spent live for us in Washington. David, thank you. Let's bring in Robert Charles, who served as Assistant Secretary of State for former President George W. Bush. Robert, good morning to you. What is your assessment this morning of our response to this attack that left three service members injured, including one in critical condition? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a step up, Carly, from where we've been. Uh, Iran is becoming more and more risky in what they're doing, both in Iraq uh, and from Syria and from the Houthi rebels that they support in Yemen, hitting not just international uh, shipping, but also hitting American sites. But the bottom line here is that uh, it's a proportionate response. It's clear. We've been consistent. And in many ways, this is something that uh, this is the right this is the right level of response. It directly hits the party that in turn hit us. And I think one of the things that we have to be thinking about is that this gets closer and closer to a direct conflict with Iran. These are proxy. Uh, these are proxy parties. The Hezbollah uh, subunit, uh, the uh, the Houthi rebels, and even those in Syria. Uh, never mind their support, Iran's support for Hamas and Islamic Jihad and others uh, in uh, out of Gaza. So I think at the end of the day, we just have to be aware, all of us, that we're creeping toward a more direct conflict with Iran, and that would change everything. That would take us back to a period uh, very similar to the 1980s when Reagan had to do some very decisive things with Iran. So if you think this is a proportionate response, do you think that these strikes against U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria will decrease as a result of what we just did? Well, the goal, always goal, is Carly, is to is to create deterrence so that they understand that they that there will be a rise in the cost to them, and we we uh, obviously Israel is part of making delivering that message, uh, and we are part of delivering that message. And uh, you know, the IRGC lost a senior uh, leader in Syria uh, last week, and that is that was from Israel. But the idea is for Iran to stand down, stand back and back off from their support of these groups like Hezbollah. Because the next step up, honestly, is a step that is similar to what Reagan did in the 1980s. That was uh, in October of 87. He initiated a, uh, an operation called Nimble Archer, and again in, in April of 88. And, and we directly hit Iranian uh, naval assets and actually took out about half of the Iranian Navy. So I think Iran just needs to be careful because uh, you just keep stepping up. And what's going to happen is the proportionate responses in order to create deterrence are going to actually uh, increase in their uh, intensity and probably get closer to Iran itself. Yeah, you know, you mentioned this IRGC leader that was just killed. I wanted to ask you about that. According to Iran state media, Israel conducted the airstrike in Syria that took this guy down. His name is 
Saeed Razi Musavi. He's responsible for coordinating the military alliance between Syria and Iran, and apparently was a, a friend of Qasem Soleimani, who died in a, a drone strike in 2020 uh, at the hands of the United States. Iran's president and the IRGC now say that Israel will pay the price for killing this guy. So does that mean that Israel's war has just widened or escalated in, in any significant way that we should know about? I think escalation is always a concern, Carly, and we should be thinking about that hour by hour, not just day by day and week by week. Uh, Iran is uh, intent on pushing the envelope here, but I think it's a good thing that the Biden administration, in concert with Israel, is responding, and that Israel, in turn, responded, took a page, actually, from the Trump book and uh, and Soleimani, and took out somebody that was obviously a, pro uh, a proactive uh, element in creating instability across the region. We've got instability in Syria. We've got it in Iraq. We've got it in the Red Sea. We've got it in the, in, uh, in obviously in Gaza. We've got it at the perimeters of all of those uh, parts of the world. We even have an Iranian missile that apparently hit a, uh, a commercial vessel in the Indian uh, Ocean. So there is a clear propensity for escalation. But the idea of responding proportionately is that you you make it clear that the costs are going to be direct, they're going to be uh, significant, and that if you keep pushing the envelope, uh, the pushback will get stronger and harder. And and ultimately, that's what we know in the history of mankind. That's how you uh, how you deter wider wars. But the answer to your question is yes. It takes us another step up toward a more direct conflict with Iran, mm -hmm. and uh, Iran mm -hmm. just needs to back off and stop the aggression. So you do mention that there is, uh, there is, you know, uncertainty in the Red Sea, a major focal point of conflict right now, where Houthi forces are attacking these commercial ships. Fifteen uh, ships have so far been attacked by Houthi forces with the help of Iran. And the Wall Street Journal puts it this way, the Houthi attacks have created a new front in the battle between Israel and Hamas and are just the latest test of Washington's ability to support its closest Middle East ally while trying to contain the conflict from spilling over into a regional war. Apparently, there is debate uh, within the Biden administration over how to handle these uh, Houthi strikes on ships in the Red Sea because the Biden administration feels that the Houthis are a wild card. How do you think that we should respond? I think you should. I think it's not that it's not that complicated. You have 12 percent of all the international commerce going through the Red Sea, and uh, these Houthi rebels are not just supported by Iran; they're directly acting on Iran's direction. They have uh, their 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 armaments come from Iran. So what we need to do is put together a coalition force uh, led by the United States, very similar to the force called uh, Earnest Will that was used by Reagan in the 80s, late 80s, and we need to make clear that we. Will protect commercial shipping in the Red Sea, as we did in the Persian Gulf, as we do in the, in the South China Sea, as we do all over the world, because uh, free uh, free markets and free freely trading countries need to be uh, unharassed, and they certainly don't need to be hit by Iranian drones coming out of Yemen. Robert Charles, thank you so much for joining us this morning and sharing your perspective. We appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Have a great day. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.